morning and thank you very much for joining us today for this series of molecular biology. So the last video was DNA transcription and today we're moving on to the next step which is DNA translation. So in the last video we looked at DNA transcription where DNA was transcribed into mRNA using RNA polymerase 2 within the nucleus. So following that mRNA processing occurred so the pre-mRNA that was formed undergoes processing from mature mRNA. So that would be your alternative splicing, etc. Your 5N capping, your poly A tail. And today we're looking at the mRNA translation. Where the mature mRNA moves into the cytoplasm, where it directs protein synthesis at the ribosome. So this involves a molecule called transfer RNA, also known as tRNA, which helps in protein synthesis during translation. And during the translation process, the mRNA's genetic code is decoded into a specific sequence of amino acids into a polypeptide chain, which occurs in three stages, known as initiation, elongation, and termination within the cytoplasm. Now, very important to just remember this, initiation, elongation, and termination also occurs in transcription. So it's similar names with different processes, yeah? So where does translation occur? So translation of the DNA occurs in the cell cytoplasm and such as ribosomes, which is the site of protein synthesis, as we covered in previous videos, yeah. And the mRNA instructions, so the messenger RNA carries genetic information for, from the DNA to the nucleus to the ribosomes in the cytoplasm. So the ribosomes will read the mRNA genetic code in sets of three nucleotides called codons. Now this is quite a tricky concept to grasp if you're not if you're new to this. I will go through this in the next video, in the next uh, slide. And as I said before in the previous video, this involves transfer RNA, which brings specific amino acids to a ribosome based on the mRNA's codon sequence. <clears throat> the ribosome then assembles the amino acids brought by the transfer RNA into a specific order according to the mRNA's instructions. And the disassembly of amino acids forms a polypeptide chain which folds into a functional protein essential for cellular function activities. That, regarding the codons, I'm going to explain this so that people can understand this fully about what happens if something goes wrong as well with the codons and I'll make a further video on that as well about mutations. Before we go into the codons etc, let's just talk a bit about the genetic code regarding translation. So the genetic code shared across organisms is carried by the RNA's four bases, adenine, guanine, cytosine and uracil. Remember, and thymine is not present, that's only in DNA, yeah, it's replaced by uracil and mRNA, yeah allowing for 64 possible triplet codes. So only 22 of these codes are necessary. 20 are for natural occurring amino acids, such as leucine, proline, uh, methionine, uh, and there's a plus, a start and a stop codon, which indicates the protein sequence beginning and end. So a start codon is basically, oh, this is where it's initiated and the stop codon is, this is where it's ended. Yeah. And there's also degeneracy, so multiple codons can code for the same amino acid. So for instance, as I've said here, arginine and serine have six codons each, while tryptophan and methionine only have one. And there's a diverse codon usage. So while no two amino acids share a code, ones with similar properties have similar codons. For instance, hydrophobic amino acids like phenylalanine, leucine, isoleucine and valine, they, show, they share codon similarities as well as asp aspartate and uh, glutamine, which are both carboxylic acids. As I was saying in the previous slides, let's look at the codons, right? So our codons, triplet share. So, look at this, you have UUU, which is phenylalanine, right? So, imagine in your mRNA sequence, you have AAA, yeah? Now, in your in your translation sequence, this will become a UUU, because the AAA corresponds with the uh, UUU. And that amino acid will be phenylalanine, yeah? Or if you have in your uh, mRNA sequence uh, CUU, that will be GAA. And if we look here at this table, GAA is present where? GUE is at the bottom here, which is glutamine GLU. <coughs> yeah? <coughs> and another example would be, say for instance, your DNA, your mRNA sequence says GGA, yeah, that would then become transcribed, uh, that would then become translated as CCU, which comes as proline. Then we have phenylalanine, <coughs> glutamine proline, yeah, and if you look here, the start codon, so AUG, methionine, yeah, that is usually the first one that's uh, 
initiates the translation. Yeah, so when the mRNA has a sequence or triplet codon such as UAC, this will become AUG methionine. So if you look here, we have three stop codons, UAA, UAG, and UGA. So if the mRNA sequence has a sequence such as G, sorry, uh, for UAA, it will be AUU. If it encounters an AUU, that will be a translation stop. Yeah, because it will become the UAA. Or if it has an AGC, then that will become UAG. That will also be a stop codon, right? And if it has a ACU, then that becomes a UGA. That also becomes a stop codon. Interesting point to note is for, for the next video, one of the next videos is that if your mRNA sequence is... <laughs> So if your mRNA sequence is, say for instance it's AUU and then it becomes UAG, if you remove one of those bases or add an extra one in, that will change the actual amino acids being formed. Yeah, so instead of a leucine being formed, that might make a pherionine or it might make an asparagine if you delete or insert something or substitute it. What I mean by substitute is if you have a CUA, yeah, and the sequence is substituted with CGA, yeah, then that will change the amino acid that's formed, but I'll talk about that in one of the next videos. Components of translation. So, translation needs essential components such as mRNA, messenger RNA, ribosomes, and transfer RNA. Yeah, uh, mRNA bases are, are read, as described in the previous side, uh, slide, as three base codons during translation, with each codon encoding a specific amino acid. So, we feel need the, the start codon, AUG. So, looking at the st structure of transfer RNA and the function, so transfer RNA has a clover leaf shape and carries an anti-codon complementary to the mRNA codons, yeah? So, talking about the codon and anti-codon, if the codon is UAC, the anti-codon is AUG, methionine, and this tRNA delivers amino acids to the ribosome for polypeptide assembly, yeah? Codon redundancy. So there's also multiple codons which encode for one amino acid, as we've seen in the previous slide. And specific codons signal the start and the end of translation. So methionine AUG uh, starts the is usually starts it, and the end of translation is usually UAA UGA. And there's one more in the previous slide. So regarding the amino acid tRNA synthesis, enzymes like amino acid tRNA synthesis these link the amino acids to the corresponding transfer RNA producing charged amino acid transfer RNA complexes, which are essential for translation. As I said in the previous slide, so the initiation process, elongation and termination is the three processes of translation, which is also similar in DNA transcription, initiation, elongation, termination, but there's different steps. So during translation initiation, initiation, this begins with the recognition of a start codon, AUG, which is usually methionine as the first amino acid in a polypeptide chain. The initiation complex is formed, so the small ribosomal subunit binds to the mRNA 5N cap, which is produced after the pre-mRNA processing, for the, um, producing mature mRNA, which is followed by the larger subunit uh, 28S to form the initiation complex, marking the start of mRNA translation. So the small ribosomal subunit is known as 16S, and the larger one is 28S. There's also initiation factors roles such as IF1, IF2, and IF3 proteins which bind to the ribosomal subunit, and these, along with a methionine carrying, carrying transfer RNA, form the initiation complex of the mRNA's AUG codon. The large ribosomal subunit binding, so when, when the initiation complex is formed, the large ribosomal subunit binds, prompting the release of initiation factors. And the tRNA binding site, the large ribosomal subunit offers free transfer RNA binding sites with, with the A site, amino acid site, ensuring that there is correct base pairing between the amino acid tRNA anticodons and mRNA codons for accurate polypeptide chain growth. So the second step of the translation is elongation. So at the ribosomes, the ribosome site, the ribosome contains two transfer, R t t transfer binding sites. One is the P site, which holds the peptide chain, while the A site accepts incoming transfer RNA. So as the methionine transfer RNA occupies the P site, the complementary amino acid T transfer RNA binds to the A site, which requires energy from GTP 
hydrolysis. So the peptide growth also occurs when amethiones shifts to the A side bonding of a new amino acid and initiating peptide growth. There is also involvement of transfer RNA movement and translocation, where the transfer RNA is now in the P site without an attached amino acid, which exits the ribosome. The ribosome then moves along the messenger RNA to the next codon using GTP energy. And this continues the peptide formation where the growing peptide is at the P site, leaving the A site open for the next amino acid transfer RNA to bind, continue the cycle. And the direction of the chain extends from the N terminal, starting with methionine, to the C terminal, which is the final amino acid. Very important to know those terms, N terminal and C terminal. The final step of the translation process is termination. So this involves stop codon recognition, as I, as I mentioned, UAA, UG, UGA. And so one of the so there's three stop codons which enter the A site, which lacks transfer RNAs. This then initiates hydrolysis, which releases the polypeptide and the P site transfer RNA. So the next step that happens is, is the small and large ribosomal subunits, the small one 16S and the large one 28S, dissociate after translation completion, preparing for the next round. Importantly, the termination codons UAA, UAG, and UGA, these lack transfer RNA recognition. So the release factors bind to these codons, releasing mRNA from the ribosome and, and completing this dissociation. So the exit site, known as the E site, holds empty transfer RNA before releasing it back into the cytoplasm for rebinding amino acids in the translation process. So Initiator methionine in ribosomal sites, only the initiator methionine transfer RNA binds to the P site, while the A site aligns with the second mRNA codon in the ribosome. So we have three sites, A site, P site, and E site. So very quickly, looking at eukaryotic and prokaryotic comparison. So the translation process occurs very similarly in prokaryotes and eukaryotes. It just involves different elongation, initiation, and termination factors, but the genetic code is gene generally identical. Just remember that the translation that we looked at today is for eukaryotic cells. So, as previously noted in bacteria, transcription and translation take place at the same time, and mRNAs of messenger RNA is very, is very, occurs very short lived. However, in eukaryotes, mRNA have very, highly variable half lives, which have modifications, and they must end in the nucleus to be translated. These multiple steps offer additional opportunities to regulate levels of protein production and fine tune gene expression, such as your 5N capping, your poly tail, your alternative splicing. In the eukaryotes, mature messenger RNA molecules must leave the nucleus and travel to the cytoplasm where ribosomes are located. However, in prokaryotic organisms, ribosomes can attach to the messenger RNA while it is still being transcribed. Where this happens, translation begins at the 5N mRNA while the free end is still attached to the DNA. So that's the end of the video today. So there's a video coming called how to reference, how to reference uh, UK standard and how to write good essays. And furthermore, there'll be a video on mutations and furthermore, subsequent copies will be released very soon. So thank you very much for taking your time to listen to this. I'm looking forward to seeing you all in the next video. Thank you, bye-bye.